Hey guys, welcome back to the 429 Podcast. I'm 4. I'm 2. And I'm 9. And today, we're going to be talking about personal projects. So, what do we mean by personal projects, right? So, you know, every, everyone, you know, if you've been following this at all, you already know that we're software engineers. We like to build things, kind of, you know, do cool projects, whatever. So Define cool. Well, cool, I mean, I guess what's cool to us cool might to not us. be cool to you, okay. but... Um, <laughs> that's going to be so, clear. That's going to be very clear. Let's, 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 let's maybe we'll forward. specify as nerd cool. I think that's, yeah. good, like, that's a good Like, if Nine's working on a project, I find it completely nerdy, but if I'm working on it, it's cool, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Him and his mirror, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so, you know, as computer scientists and engineers, personal projects for us, you know, typically they're going to mean, oh, uh, we have some cool problem we want to try and solve. We have some, I don't know, Maybe we want to try and build some cool devices or something just for fun or maybe use use code to, you know, make our hobbies better or our lives easier, right? This is mm-hmm. typically what we mean when we say personal projects. And a lot of the time, sometimes they're not even for, like, I guess, for fun. Sometimes it's to learn, right? And we want to do a project just so that we can pick up a new skill, right? Maybe I want to get really good with React, so I'll just go out and start a, start building a web page, right? A, per, a personal portfolio web page or something or just some random stuff to learn it better. Uh, personal projects tend to be a really, really great way for computer scientists, software engineers, and other people you know, in lateral industries to kind of get better and learn different things they didn't know before. So I think that's pretty a, pretty much a, a good good idea of what personal projects is. Do you guys have anything you want to add? Uh, I would say, just to note in the beginning, um, we should make clear that this is not only for people who are in the computer science field yeah. or even engineering. I, anyone can really be doing these okay. projects we'd be talking about or should be interested in doing projects. Yeah, you never know when you want to do a career change. You never know if even if you don't want to do a career change, you might find a lot of enjoyment in you know doing these as hobbies and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's true. You're right. Let's think. Let's think about it. Right? Let's say. Let's say maybe you're in into art and you want to learn how to sculpt. Right? Maybe you normally paint, but you want to learn to sculpt. Only way you yeah. can learn that skill is by, you know, doing a new project, right? Let's say maybe you you want to get better at welding, right? Uh-huh. How are you going to do that? Start a new personal project, right? Like, these are all really good ways of kind of just like skill learning and, you know, maybe it's a hobby of yours. You can just start doing things for fun as a hobby as well, but... If, yeah, if, like, if, you guys if, don't know this, but like one of my big personal projects, right, is actually outside of software engineering realm, right? I like doing a lot of construction, hands-on construction work, right? Mm-hmm. So it's uh-huh. like... Like, like floorboard and stuff like that, uh, caulking, painting, right? All these like little like tiny projects. I don't have as much time to do them as I used to, right? But mm-hmm. like, I love doing all that kind of stuff because like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like real life software engineering for me where it's kind of yeah. just like putting everything together and seeing the end result and except, except from seeing my code run, I'm actually just living in it, right? And uh, so that's actually the biggest difference for me in terms of that. But I love doing all that construction stuff and like too. I had that no idea you were into that stuff. I actually had no yeah. idea. Yeah. All right. Well, I have yeah. yeah like you, I... guys, like you guys, been to my house. You guys know the bathroom I have by my room. Yeah. Yeah. I paint. I painted that whole thing. I um, worked on some of the like basic plumbing before we got a plumber to come in and do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then like my room recently when we had that huge uh, um, issue also I told you about I told you guys about right mm-hmm. I had lifted up all I had to get all the floorboards out again get yeah. the caulking I still have to caulk everything back up but like all the floorboards are back in now and everything too so it's been it's been fun like that stuff is just interesting oh, okay all right too, tiring as hell though I'm, I'm I'm glad you really enjoy that because remember when my basement had a little bit of a leak a couple of weeks ago well uh. Uh, my, my floor <laughs> panels still need to be replaced and I have a couple of wall panels that need to go back up so. Maybe I can if you enjoy it, I'm, I mean, yeah. If you enjoy it, I mean, might as well. Right? Yeah, exactly. Might right? as well, right? It's fun. it's fun for you, so might as well. All right. Uh, anyway, like we said, I mean, they don't have to be hobbies, right? So the the question mm-hmm. here is: do do your personal projects have to be hobby related? And I don't think they do. Like, they can be enjoyable for you, but like I said, they can also be specifically for a learning experience that have an end goal in mind, right? Like, you know, I mean, can we really define hobby here? Like, what do you like? What do we mean? Is a hobby something we do consistently or is it just something like... Uh, I think a hobby is something done sort of consistently. I think it's something you enjoy doing in your free time. Yeah. So it's something you kind of look forward to when you have an available free time. That's, for me, considered a hobby. And a hobby could or cannot be a learning experience. It doesn't always have to be in a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? Like if you do um, like train modeling, right? Yep. That could be a learning experience, but 
most likely a lot of the things you learn in that won't be applicable to your you know everyday life or your career just depending on your career you're in here you know here would be my my definition of this right i would say that a personal project doesn't have to be part of your hobby but actually i'm sorry i have no idea where i'm going with that you guys can continue. You guys can continue. <laughs> I, 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 th- I think i think a hobby compasses all but a personal project is within a, a hobby Right, so a personal hobby is like a, a specific hobby, yeah. most likely, you know, because a hobby, if you think about it, it's just it's just something you look forward to in your free time, and most likely if you're diving into in a personal project, it's you're you're doing it in your own free yeah. time. You're doing it because you want to learn. I remember what I was going to say now. I was okay. going to say that Go. your hobbies can be part of your personal project, but just because you're doing a personal project and something doesn't mean that it's a hobby. That's what I was trying to get at. Oh, okay, I see your point. Okay, you know, so like. Let's say I really wanted to learn how to use React to build a web page. Maybe I'll do that and I'll make a small React personal project to help me learn that. But, however, you know, it might not be a hobby of mine to build web pages, right? That's that's what I was trying to say. Mm, got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I can see that point of view. So, but, th- let, let's think about this as well, right? Are personal projects totally technical? Like, you know, I guess... No. No. No, no, no. I mean, two gay was an idea of one, right? If you think about it, yeah. A, a lot of construction, well, a lot of construction projects are personal projects, like re- redoing your bathroom. yeah, like DIY stuff is all personal yeah. stuff, you know. But not a lot of them are technical. I mean, think of it also. My my a lot of my personal projects are kind of like uh, music related, right? Yeah. Kind of yeah. building up a library and kind of listening to tracks and stuff like that. That's not really that. Hunting down old iPods that people don't want anymore. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> kind of the technical, to be honest. But I mean they don't have to be that technical. Well, let's define technical, right? Because your definition of technical might be different than someone else's, right? What do you think? You what do you think the, the word technical means? Me, when I'm thinking technical, it's software engineering. Yeah, point I blank, agree. Right? I, I, I with you. That's my first thought. But like, it's just, are you writing code? Yes. It's technical. Or are you dealing with like some circuitry and circuit boards and stuff? <laughs> Excuse me. Bless then you. it's technical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? If you're not dealing with any of that stuff, all right, it's not really technical. I would say it's if it's not technical if it involves a computer literacy of an average person, you know, like surfing the web or like uh, be able to use, go on YouTube. You know, these te- I, yeah. they're technically, but they're not, they're not like specifically technical. Like you don't need to research and learn these things you kind of like learn it but through let's look average... about this right you, we're talking about construction yeah. possible construction projects is here right so what about like uh let, let, let's say that you like architecting buildings or whatever right and yeah. you know maybe you're not using a computer for that you can do calculations by hand i mean that doesn't necessarily fit exactly what i think of when i think of a technical technical something like something being technical but i mean having to do all those calculations yeah. and, and run so all I those statistics to, like, like and all the cap- math yeah. Right. So I want to say like a caveat with the technical piece that I gave. Right. It's like majority of your time is not spent on technical stuff is what I want to really emphasize. Also, right? like, also yeah. that's a possible way of doing it. There's also people who just don't do it that technical way. So, yeah, like me, I just kind of stick it to a wall and hope it fits. Yeah. Like the fact that there, you can do it without that technical uh, path means that it's not by nature not really technical. You just made it into a technical thing. Also, it doesn't fit 90 percent of the time. From my mm-hmm. experience, so there's lots of cutting involved. Yeah, <laughs> like, no effects. So, what? What are like, yeah, your like, guys' most memorable projects? Oh, man, um, of, like side projects? Yes, personal projects, whatever. Honestly, one big one right now is like this that we're doing now. This podcast. I don't know if you would define it as a hobby or not a hobby or whatever it may be, right? But outside this podcast, you know, like besides the recording aspect and like you know how Nine does editing and stuff like that, right? I'm looking for like sourcing or um like when we're looking for tech cast stuff, like all those news articles and stuff, it's keeping me engaged and all that stuff, mm-hmm. which is a welcome break from everything I do day to day. Right. Absolutely. So it's like the main reason I love doing this podcast, the main reason like we continuously do this podcast, right. At least for me personally, is just, it's not technical, right? Like I'm not sitting here writing code. I'm literally like walking around my house yep. and just, and just, on my phone recording right yep so that's i think the biggest advantage for me because it's like it lets me get a little bit of exercise in because i've gotten fat but the other (laughs) advantage is that like it's not technical i don't need to sit down technically hammer away some code details some bugs some exceptions or some stuff like that right absolutely like it's a well it's a welcome 
change of pace and a welcome break, I would say, right? Yep. So, and then a bunch of other side projects I have on my list that I want to do, right? To be honest, I don't know, like, why I haven't done them yet. Besides, you know, I keep making BS excuses that, like, oh, I don't have the time or whatever, right? But, like, it could also be, like, technical burnout's a real thing, right? Mm -hmm. It could be that I'm facing technical burnout, right? And it's, like, I just don't want to be near code. I'd rather just be outside walking around or driving around or whatever it may be than actually sit at my desk for another four more hours and write some code, you know? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah, but other memorable projects, right? Um, man, like I would say some of the hackathon stuff we've done, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would classify that as side projects, but we turned one of them into like a business case competition, mm -hmm. right? Back in college, which was interesting. Yep. I mean, we completely lost, but I still think the idea was very, very full of merit. Um, and then uh, a bunch of a uh, bunch of other stuff. Like, I guess you could say one of my current projects would probably be the Among Us video games I've been playing. It's a lot of a uh, personal project for me. <laughs> for, um, playing playing those games and kicking ass and uh, dying and getting killed every time in electrical, but it's fine, right? Like we we get in there, like so, yeah. No, what about you? Um, some of the early side projects I can think of that are pretty memorable are like the the, the silliest ones. You know, not nothing really that uh, useful, but for me, kind of like I had fun doing it, and and the outcome was kind of funny. Uh, like the duplicate lyric project I made yep. long ago. Mm -hmm. That one was, in retrospect, very useless. You know, I, I one one in the music industry can already tell you a lot of lyrics in a song is repetitive and duplicated. But just seeing it, seeing how some of the most popular songs are, how often their lyrics are just repeated and repeated, yep. was pretty fascinating. Um, I had this Reddit bot that I made that just gave me deals and stuff. That was pretty nice too. Um, I think a lot of my projects encompass either the, the category of being really silly or being somewhat usable in some like, but only specific to me, you know, <laughs> not, not, not usable in like, this would help millions of people or this would uh, make so many people happy. It'd just be like, how do I make my daily life yep. easier? Yeah, nine, nine's like, ah, save the world. Nah, nah. Like, can I get another three dollars cheaper on this bottle of water, real quick? Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm a selfish kind of man. I'm uh, sadly. I, I, every time I think of like a project that could probably save people, help people, I just think like there's probably someone out there that can do it better than me, and I'm just making it harder for everyone in the process by just going that route. Maybe I should not have that idea, but that's just always the mentality I go with. Like, someone out there is probably doing it already and like way better than I am. Yeah. I think you know? the biggest thing I think the biggest thing that you emphasize with that one too, right? It's like a passion kind of thing, right? Like yeah. like I just emphasized technical burnout is real uh, like real like combi if you combine the amount of hours us three work in a week, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking anywhere at the base minimum of maybe 180 to a max of maybe 300, right? Yeah. So it's like that's a that's a huge chunk of time, right? Literally cities are built in that that amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like it makes you really just like get really burned out from all that throughout the week and then you spend your weekends either relaxing sleeping working on like some personal thing that you're passionate about right mm -hmm. or you're trying to go do a technical side thing to just make yourself more useful to society but even then like how many weekends can you really do that technical side thing without getting tired right absolutely so it's all that whole personal personal project basis thing right it's all this whole technical burnout aspect mm -hmm. which we can go into later into the podcast if we have time remaining at the end yeah. right so let's but well, let's keep going but so, yeah. um <laughs> for what are some of your most memorable projects so i mean you guys know i have a fair i have a, quite a few personal projects I've, I wor I've worked on and i have a quite a few that i'm kind of sitting on right now actually still trying to kind of work through but you know like uh mm -hmm. like two said we're just we've been very very busy so some of my stuff has been put on halt while I'm busy elsewhere, but um, I think probably one of the most useful ones I did for myself and my favorite ones that maybe it's not directly, like, totally tech technical, but I think it's definitely at least partially technical, um, and I mean, it was a lot of fun to, to actually get together. So that's my yeah. that's my, that's my my home server, my NAS, and kind of just other stuff I've, I've, I've built on it, right? So this was probably... Maybe a year ago at this point, I decided one day, I was like, huh. I was like, I really kind of want a home server. I, and like, I, I'd been thinking about it maybe a little bit before that, but for the most part, it was like really spur of the moment. And like, 
I just picked myself up and like I went over to the computer store and I'm walking around like, okay, how cheap can I build an ass for, for whatever like they have here on the shelf right now? Like if I was to build one right now, how much would I have to spend to walk out the door with a usable computer and, you know, maybe like at least eight terabytes of storage or some, something like that. And so I was like, okay, whatever, let's, let's look for it. And I'm walking around and, you know, all of a sudden I'm seeing some really good deals and, you know, I found out that there was a deal for like, oh, you can get a motherboard and a CPU and you save like 60 bucks or something. And then like, I found that the hard drive was on sale for like 30% off. And I was like, man, I can't walk out of this store right now and pass up all these great deals. So I ended up, you sound like nine right now. I know I do. I know I do. (laughs) Well, this is how I don't go to the store. I know they get me there. This was, this was (laughs) totally, it, it was totally like, it really was such a good deal. And like the deal is what made me pull the trigger because I was like, you know, if I wanted to get something really good with that much storage and like actually have it be usable, I was thinking I'd probably have to spend more than I did. I think I actually ended up spending like two fifty or something and like I have my NAS now completely built. It's you know, eight gigs of RAM, a half decent processor, eight terabytes of storage. Like the only thing I need to work on is just expanding my storage. So that way I can use um RAID to get some better data backup going. But you know, I'd get it home finally, I get it together. What did I, I forget what I put on it, some Linux operating system and I think you told us you put Ubuntu on it, but the non-UI version. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, but, you know, now it's just... But like I said, I like, host. see, that's like that was like a passion, right? See, that was like a passion, yep. like a change of pace kind of project kind of thing. And I think that's what I would emphasize with some of these projects. And, you know, it's, like, it's, it's also like a continuing project, right? Because not only do I have to get it home and build it, but, you know, I put Plex on it now so that way I can stream all my photos and videos and backups and stuff on any of the smart TVs in my house. Um, I used some, uh, what did I call it? Some, some custom, some custom printing features that way I can connect printers to it that don't offer Wi-Fi printing directly. Right. Um, you know, what, what else do I have on it right now? Um, uh, I have some small applications that just give me like reminders of certain things on certain dates that recur. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you were also going to add like your sprinkler system to it too. Yeah. That's another thing I was thinking about doing was hooking up to my sprinklers. That way I could control my sprinklers from, you know, Anywhere in anywhere. my house or even anywhere in the world if I'm connected to it, right? So it was it was just a really cool personal project and, like, kind of the sky's the limit with it because now I have it. It doesn't cost me a dollar to host anything on it because it's mine. And, I mean, I keep it running there. I mean, maybe it costs a couple dollars a month for, um, for sure power it. draw, but, I mean, I got a pretty decent power supply to make sure that it's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. So, like, that was kind of a, a, pe- a personal project that just keeps on giving. And outside yeah. of that, you guys know that I'm pretty into, like, IoT. So, you know, um, I mean, now you know we had a class together regarding a lot of this. So I built yeah. some things regarding, like, RFID and, like, keypad locking. And I know you have you did some of that also. Um, I did some stuff regarding – oh, yeah, I, I literally built a kind of makeshift ventilator, quote-unquote, where I took an Ambu bag, a servo motor. I turned the servo motor into – or not a servo motor, a stepper motor. And turned the stepper motor into a linear actuator so that I could increase the amount of uh, force it was able to output in a single direction without needing a stronger motor. And I was able to actually... Side note, if any of you guys don't know what 4 is saying, that's fine. Me and 9 still don't know because keep going on 4. Like... Okay, well anyway, then I got a motor controller, hooked it up to a DC power supply. I know what he's saying. And I was able to like compress this ambu bag and generate a certain amount of force of like cubic liters of air. That would come out and then, you know, it would retract itself and then just keep pushing it and it would just keep going. Right. So, and then was this going to be a, a, a perfect solution um, to something like, you know, the ventilator shortage? Obviously, it wasn't a perfect solution, but I mean, I was just kind of interested in seeing what I could come up with that might have been half decent. Right. And well, I mean, when you've got people literally like dying, um, like, if I can come up with something that might be able to keep someone alive for an extra day, you know, there was no reason why your big medical corporations shouldn't be able to do something something similar. Ah, uh, so so I see, you know, like so you do like saving the world, whereas nine here on the other hand just wants to save another dollar. I see I see where priorities <laughs> lie here, nine. I really well, see this. Well, that's true. But don't forget <laughs> a four also save a couple of dollars through that NAS server, so he's not Absolutely. free of guilt. Absolutely. So, you know, the guilt gets us all too, so don't think that you're above us all. And I think I've got oh, two God. kind of I'm personal projects I'm working on right now. One of them is so you guys just heard me talk about my leaky basement before, which is fixed now. But 
you know, it's the second time we've had a leak down here, probably in the last maybe like six so years. Two is going to come over soon. Two is so, going to come over soon. Um, that one. I'm trying to get my take Home this Depot water, card all right to go. <laughs> I have this water detector, and I want to cook, hook it up to a Raspberry Pi Zero or maybe a Wi Fi version of the Arduino. That way, I can have it tell my NAS when there's a leak, and I can have it call me or email me or something, and bam, I'll immediately know, hey, for your basement's leaking, like come fix it now, please. You know, and then besides well, that. I'm As a... the water gets higher, please, 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 please. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the signal just shuts off, and I stop getting emails. <laughs> but and then outside of that, my last personal project, which is kind of more for, you know, I want to upkeep my skill set in, in the cybersecurity realm, um, and it also kind of you know adds personal value to me, and it's just something that's interesting to me. Uh, I recently bought a study guide for the CISSP which is the Certified Information Systems um, and Security Professional, I believe, something sure. like that. Um, <laughs> sure. And that's a kind of like highly sought after cybersecurity certification. And now I don't know what he's talking about. You're right. You know, now, now I, I just bought a textbook <laughs> for that. I'm going to try and kind of maybe study a little bit when I have free time. That way I can maybe get that certification, which would be kind of cool. Awesome. That's pretty all exciting. It makes me realize that I should probably do more cyber. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, like I compared to you guys, I've been a complete bum when it comes to side projects now. I guess besides this podcast, so like, to be fair, I do have a lot of side projects, but the amount of usefulness each of them have is very low. <laughs> the amount of motivation I have to do side projects right now is not very high. I will be honest there. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we should talk about that. We should talk about like why why we do these side projects. You know, like, what's the primary drive? There, it's different. I think per project, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but, I think I think when we were doing side projects in college and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. We we still had that like, like we still did our technical work for our homework and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like we still had some free time left over. We were all hanging out. Like, huh? Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And we kind of just started time. experimenting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's been the biggest difference because now that you're at uh, a full time position, it's kind of harder to make time for side projects and allocate your time for that, just because like. You get tired at the end of the day and at the end of the week, right? You have to also worry about dinner. Excuse me. And then if you're commuting at that at this time, you, you know, like you're commuting and everything. So it makes it makes time for other things really hard. And then if you don't allocate time for yourself to like, you know, wind down at the end of the night, right? Yeah. Um, you got to work out. You got to shop. You got to eat. And there's blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. It's like just more adulting. It's like just, yeah. And it's like. It's kind of just run at, run its course in, like, the amount of time we have right now. Like, for example, if I have, like, a day off or something, yeah, maybe I'll relax for half the day. But the other half of the day, I may just start experimenting on something, like, stupid, right? Absolutely. Uh-huh. And I think that's the big, biggest difference, I guess. Your PTO is really just that time off that we had in college that we could just go and experiment with it. Now, in college, you know, for us, for example, though, like, we didn't really strictly adhere to that three hours, you know, for every one credit you have to study and stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we had our free time to like experiment around or do anything. Or we were all sitting in the lab coming up with stupid ideas. Right. And like, mm-hmm. we see it now, like if you look at all our, our friend group, right. They're still doing side projects. They're still experimenting. They're still doing like stupid shit. Right. But like us on the other hand, like by the time they tell us like, even hop on for a video game at the end of the night, we're like, bro, we're exhausted. Like I'm done for tonight. Right. <laughs> And so it's kind of a, and it's kind of just that main difference, I think, is really shaken up. Do I want to make, allocate more time for side projects? Yes. And I'm trying to do that. But first, you know, other priorities are taking place at the moment over that. So that's just, yep. at least for my personal situation. Yeah, I don't know. You guys? I, I think it's an important thing to note that also in college, we weren't always just doing the technical software stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we do. We had classes like reading. We had math. We had other stuff. And even if we did have all CS classes, math. we weren't always <laughs> we weren't always doing um, projects. You know, a lot of a lot of CS classes were just all theoretical, or they were just more of like on classes, but no like big projects. You know, just smaller projects. So we had more free time. We yeah, didn't feel and- like burned out as often at home. We did. You know, and then the other thing to like emphasize with that too is like there's a difference if like you love what you do and you don't love what you do, right? Yeah. Like, us three, I would say, are very fortunate in that we love what we do. We enjoy uh, building, you know, working. We actually, like, thoroughly enjoy, like, our jobs and working, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So I think that's been our biggest difference because, you know, I say that we're putting in anywhere between 180 to 300 hours a week combined on that, right? 
but that's willingly doing that, right? It's not because we have not, to. No one would notice. Yeah. We, we wouldn't get reamed out if we're putting in, you know, less work than that, but... Yeah, but we just choose to because, like, we're stuck on a problem, and it's like, clock's five, clock says five o'clock. I could easily just be like, no, I'll deal with it tomorrow, but, you know, me, I'm just like, no, I'm not going to leave it. I start tinkering with it, and then, you know, it just it's just a mountain out of a molehill, right? You just get deeper and deeper into a problem, and then next thing you know, it's 3 a.m. If right? I leave that bug, so, I'm not going to be able to stop thinking about it for the rest of the night anyway. It's going to be exactly. on my mind anyway. Exactly. So it just made sense. And we enjoy what we do. So that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Now, for example, if we didn't enjoy what we do and we're working 40 hours a week, right, I think we definitely have a little bit more time for side projects because, or at least in my case, I'd have more time to exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like So um, I think that would definitely be the biggest difference there. But right now, it's just because we're thoroughly enjoying what we're doing and everything, I think that's what's really causing us to like withdraw from the, all these side projects and like studying and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's been the biggest difference, at least in, from my perspective in my realm. Nine. I would say that's pretty much true. Um, I think we have a tendency to kind of much go above and beyond and we tend to feel the effects of that way later on. Yeah. Uh, we don't like half-assing shit. We like, don't like half-assing stuff. Not. And usually it burns us out way later on after we realize what we've done, but we'll still gladly do it again and again and not learn our lesson. <laughs> um, but That's I mean, we learned so much during that burnout. I mean, yeah, that pre burnout, we learned, phase, you know, we learned a lot. And I, like you said, we well, keep repeating, we, we enjoy doing it. It's not like we don't. Like, if I didn't enjoy doing it, I wouldn't go run the clock until eight or nine p.m. sometimes and you know, still go gladly go back into it the next morning. Like, you guys uh, remember I, how much time we put into our theses and, and to our senior project? Like, you know, we were putting way more time than required into that. Like, I mean, way more time than required. I mean, there were some weeks that, you know, we were, I was treating There those, were some weeks I didn't sleep. Yeah, like, literally, like, some literally people didn't we were treating like, a full-time job. Like, literally, some people didn't even understand our projects that we repeated to them. And we're not talking about, like, average people. We're, like, talking we're talking about, about our professors. Like, we're talking about some professors. Like, didn't even understand <laughs> the project premise and when we explained it to them. It was, just, like, it was just different, right? It was really specific to what we were working on. And we just had, you know, by the end of the project, we had so much, like, I guess, experience in the field that, you know, it was just really specific. And you really needed to kind of take a deep dive on it to really understand it. 100%, yeah, 100%. But like what I was saying, primarily going back to it, is that even if we did like probably 5 or 6 p.m., another thing we, we should keep in mind that during those hours that we're working intensely, we're, we're only doing like CS stuff. So, you know, it's hard to like relax by doing a hobby with more mm -hmm. CS stuff, you know, because yeah, you're kind of yeah. like really intense using all your power. And um, on during you know the work hours, it's hard to relax. And most most hobbies are kind of too relaxy, you mm -hmm. know. And like people don't realize that like, yes, we're programming, but there's a lot of thinking that's involved in programming. Like people have the assumption programmers are like the fastest typers. Like I had so many people go to me the other day, right? They were like, all right, so like we had we were playing this card game. They're like, okay, who can type the fastest, right? Everyone nominated me because I program on a day to day basis. I'm like, no, <laughs> like. I, I'm, the, I'm one of the slowest typers, right? Because as I'm typing a line of code or what a line of whatever it may be, first I'm deleting half of it every time. But the second aspect is also like I'm thinking at the same time what to write, right? It's not just busting out code left and right. It's a lot of thinking, running, and then especially, you know, I've been doing a little bit of UI and Python work recently, right? Mm -hmm. So it's running it, seeing what the result looks like, Googling my mistake, Right. Or if I was doing a react right and nine, I'm sure you're more familiar with this. Right. You know, I'm waiting for the Dom to come back up, seeing how everything's messed up, change one like little like parenthesis I have and then just watch it render again. Right. Yep. Most it's, of my time is not even typing. It's just waiting for the Dom to reload. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's been the biggest thing. Right. It's not we're not fast typers, but a lot of the work that we do is very like. We have we're not fast typers. We're fast Googlers. That, that's yeah, not, that I can agree with that, you. That, that, <laughs> we're, we're very we know Google inside out. I, mean, uh, I, 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 think, I think I do type pretty fast though. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty happy with my typing speed. I mean I I, I, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I pride myself on my typing speed, but I think I have it maybe above average typing speed. Yeah. But it, it, it comes and goes. Like there's days where I'm like typing, I feel like I'm uh initial dean. The day and like just drifting with my, I feel like there's smoke coming out of my fingertips. The keyboard and then also absolutely matters. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but there's days I where agree. I'm like I'm like an old man, like age. <laughs> I oh man, I, I spelled J. Freaking <laughs> damn it, like. <laughs> But this is definitely, but there. I mean, typing speed is hand to hand with programming, hundred yeah. percent. But it's you don't have. It's not exactly one to one. You don't need. And to be you a know, fan. a lot of people ask like, why? Why do programmers still use like these old ass machines and everything, right? Like, why am I still on like my laptop from two thousand twelve, for example, when I work sometimes, right? Yeah. You're just so used to the keyboard, the feel, and because we customized it and made it, you know, ours. It's kind of just not your standard laptop I can pull off the street or anything, right? It's kind of my laptop, like my comfort zone, my whatever I'm doing on it, right? It's kind of, I've developed, I guess, a personal connection with it, right? So it's like, I guess that's the whole aspect there, right? I don't have that issue personally. Yeah, me, really? I, 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 <laughs> if I get a better laptop tomorrow, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I take away your mechanical keyboard right now from your desk, how would you feel? I buy, I buy the same one. I'd, yeah, I'd probably go buy another one. Um, another one or same one. I kind of have an idea of what I like. Usually I like brown switches. Like I got a Best Buy gift card burning a hole in my pocket right now and I'm deciding like, huh, <laughs> do I get a new keyboard or should I get a TV for my room? I don't know. don't know what to do. The difference between more RAM for your NAS. See, the, the difference between you Good. and I too, the difference between you and I too is that you, you're, you're, you're attuned to your keyboard because you're like, you're sentimental. You love it. You don't know why you love it, but you love it. I know exactly why I like my mechanical keyboard. They're brown switches. They work great. They're hybrid, and I love the typing speed. I can give feedback. Let me see. I know. Please, I am currently field. rocking. What are these? Cherry MX Reds right now. On my those are the those are the most clicky ones, right? No, those are blues and greens. These are like blues and greens. Yeah, those are like quieter ones, right? Yeah. I don't like those. I need to be clicked. That's why I like brown. It's like a, a mix in the middle. It's like between red and blue. I love those. We could go. I, 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 I could talk in an hour about mechanical keyboard. Well, we will then. Let's go ahead. That's it. We're changing the episode topic right now. <laughs> right now? All right, let's go. No, no. I just got no, a Logitech no. gaming. I got a Logitech gaming mechanical keyboard the other day, actually. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what kind of switches there are? No. No. Are you I just got it. I just pen? got it because it matched my mouse. Um, you fool. You know, for some people, mechanical keyboards are a hobby. You can actually custom make them if you get a frame and the chipset. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, I'm in a subreddit. I'm in a subreddit. I'm in a subreddit. I know exactly. I have coworkers who actually made their custom keyboards. Yeah, and, like, they're I know. using it for work right now. I was thinking about doing it for the longest time until you figure out how much you have to sink in to make even one. It's an no. expensive hobby. It is a very expensive hobby. It's a very expensive oh. hobby. You're talking about to make at least a uh, standard starter keyboard. You're running at least three hundred dollars. Yeah, see, I don't know about that one, Chief. That's a little yeah. expensive for me. Yeah, yeah. I've been in that. I've been in that community of, uh, of keep mechanical keyboards and stuff like that for I would say two years now. Yep. Right. I I know. I seen a lot of very nice custom keyboards with different frames, different switches. Uh, some of them primarily just for their color scheme. People just make uh, one because they wanted to match their whole desk. Like literally spend RGB, $300. RGB, RGB, RGB. Some people with really nice wiring. Like why you have no idea how important wiring Ready is. Ready cables? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're talking about at least three or $500 to make one. See, my mechanical like keyboard is actually very old. Um, my I, got, I have the Corsair. I think it's the K95 with the extended 18 key macro macro buttons. Yeah. And I actually don't have RGB on this. I only have white LEDs. Interesting. So, like, RGBs have, have been the RGB standard for, like, years at this point. I'm pretty sure I got this keyboard, like, five, six, maybe even seven years ago. I don't know. Can't quite remember. Mine, mine's a Razer. They don't even make it anymore. It's a Oteca. Oteca. Okay. Interesting. So, see, nine. There you go. For example, if I buy a keyboard right now, what are you going to do? i buy another mechanical keyboard that's a different... Type, different brands, same key different... switches. There it is. I don't, it's a I don't, different I don't, feel. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, actually. It would be different because mine's actually not a mechanical keyboard. Technically, technically it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid system that uh, Razer made. It's like sort of like, it's like a hybrid between mechanical and like, uh, like, I would say. Interesting. Like, it's I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like mechanical, but it's not a regular mechanical switch. It, it uses like. You, a mechanical switch has much higher height, right? Uh -huh. So these are these are more to, down more, but they still have the same click and feel back as like a mechanical keyboard would. Mm -hmm. So I think it's some proprietary system to have. Interesting. Anyway, well, get, mm. getting back to the topic of personal projects, we spent you know 15 minutes not talking about mechanical keyboards, but um, 
I think for me, some of the some of my like motivation for doing some projects, right? Yeah, you, know, you have the obvious reasons we talked about already, like you know, learning more, having fun, yada yada yada. But I also kind of mm-hmm. like the idea of, like for example, one of the big reasons I made my NAS was to help my family, right? So like, my parents they have all those photos, like family photos and stuff they wanted to back up, right? So like, yeah, being able to do that, it was fun project for me, and it was a you know big help for them, right? So I got to give them a little bit of a gift, and. You know, now we can load up our pictures and see them from our TVs and stuff, which is just really, really cool. And, you know, outside of that, it was just fun for me also, right? It was just just cool to do. Now we have it. You know, we can add things. If I wanted to do, like, security cameras, I could, you know, set up some security cameras, run some Ethernet back into my house, get a couple extra um, hard drives, and bam. Now all of a sudden my NAS is going to be doing our home surveillance also, right? So... You know, I can't wait for the, the day four limit. moves out of his house. I can't wait for the day four moves out of his house. And all of a sudden his parents are going to be paying and be like, um, four, the, the lights aren't working. Uh, <laughs> and every little major, every technical issue is going to be a problem. Just because I know four has that house wired to a T. So he can never even be kicked out. If he gets kicked out, it's like, all right, well, there goes the house. Like, yeah, dude, like, I, you know, that's actually another thing. I didn't even start thinking about this, but like, I've been running Ethernet now, like through all of my walls, trying to get Ethernet because I, you know, I, I recently bought like a 32 port Ethernet switch, and I've been wiring up my house because, like, Wi-Fi is so slow sometimes, and like, I don't like how it can just like randomly like kick you off drop. and like, do random yeah. stuff. So like, I'd like to have like Ethernet ports like around my house that way. Oh, I want to sit down and work. I can just plug into the wall. Bam! And now I have a hardwired connection and anywhere I am. It's like I've started doing that, and, you know, back here by my kind of home office, I've got a couple of Ethernet cords ran, and I've got, like, a six-port Ethernet switch over here. Um, Where'd you get a 32-port switch? What happened? Where'd you get a 32-port switch? I got a Amazon. Best Buy. Really? I think so. Add that to the side project list. It was a while uh, ago. Maybe they don't have it anymore, but it was uh, maybe, like, a year or two ago. I actually only recently got around to setting it up. <laughs> Yeah, I, probably See, I think that's also the other thing. Up a year ago. Yeah, I think that's the, also the other thing, right? Like, we have all these side things, like, um, we have in mind, too. Like, I don't know, for, uh, but, like, me and Nine recently really started getting into more and more, like, reading, right? Yep. Like, physical books and everything. I'm a big proponent of physical books. I can't do digital books, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's like, I got all these books and everything, and I, st- and I like, turned the page on a couple of them, right? But it's like, like having dedicated time to just sit and read is, like, something, like, I miss ironically now, right? Yeah. Like I remember when we were in college, like we all dreaded that, right? Because first in college they told they told you what to read, which was kind of like, eh, eh, right? But like here, it's like now I can read my own stuff, like on all these things, right? Like I have a Steve Jobs book I'm trying to get through right yep. now, right? And it's like just trying to read through all of that and everything. And it's just interesting. It's just timing wise, you know. But yeah. But anyway. I'm- Okay. Say, Go ahead, Nine. What were you saying? I was going to say, um, I think a, a big issue I have is I wish I could read to back then as a kid. I'd be able to like open up a book and pretty much just read from cover to cover. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, it, it wasn't even an issue for me. Like I just can go all the way to the full length and have it done or just like pick it up but quickly again. Yeah. These days I, I can't. These days uh, I think because there's so many distractions now. Yeah. And the fact that, like, I can, like, go to a, a little device called my smartphone and get, like, endless uh, entertainment at my fingertips mm-hmm. easily is kind of like a – it's it's a it's a killer because, like, it used to be when I read in the kid, that was, like, you read because that was the only thing you could do. Mm-hmm. Really, you were just trying to kill time. And it just so happened that you really enjoyed the process of reading. But now that I have a smartphone, a smartphone exists, um, I could just do the same thing with YouTube for, like, 10 hours. Yeah, it's like we could we could talk about the whole thing smartphones have really killed, right? But like it it's tough. I think smartphone was a good invention for mankind, but at the same time I think it's really just drawn us away from society for so many other reasons. Books being one example, talking to people being another example, right? Oh don't worry, I didn't I didn't talk to people before smartphones. Oh, okay, perfect. So I you, <laughs> right, but like social interactions and everything. And you know, we've talked offline about this so many times, right? Like how especially now with COVID right um we're still in this pandemic for those of you listening out there right like it's it's just like man like social interactions i'm i'm afraid to see what social interactions mm-hmm. will look like after this right 
Mm -hmm. Like, it's terrifying. You have literally students now starting their schooling career remote, Mm -hmm. right? That's unheard of, right? They don't have that look and feel. They don't have that terrifying feeling of going into a building their first day, right? And not seeing their parents for seven hours, right? Like... When you, were, when you were a little kid, four or five years old, and you were going to kindergarten and all that, right? That was a terrifying feeling. And now it's like you kind of just attached to the hip with your parents. I don't know how that's really going to affect that social be, relationships can and everything. Can that be a personal project, getting better at, I guess, social social settings, interactions? Social interactions. Hmm? Yes, Thoughts? I agree. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think anything could really be a personal project, right? And that is a personal project. In fact, I'll be completely honest with you. One of my whole personal, like, projects back like years ago before i even met you guys it was like high school right yeah was to become like a more effective like networker Networker, right like yeah like talk to people open up right because i mean i was always that like secluded like in the shell kind of dude like i'm doing my thing right but like like sometimes social interactions could have been a little awkward right in Mm -hmm. high school and stuff right because those are your awkward years and, and everything right but you know opening yourself more not being afraid to be embarrassed, like the amount of times I've been embarrassed and everything, it's insane, right? Mm-hmm. Like just going through all those pains and everything makes you just stronger, right? Yeah. And like now it's kind of like just run into a random person and just start up a conversation, you know, like that doesn't worry me as much, right? Yeah, the first 10 seconds worries me because I'm like, all right, what do I talk about, right? But like after we get on a topic, it's kind of just like, all right, let's go. And I think that one thing that's helped us is like, you know, we talked about this also, right? You know, nine, four, and myself included, right? We have a bunch of bunch of just random domain knowledge about a bunch of random shit. Yeah, we do. Right? Like <laughs> we can go off we can go off for two hours talking about the length of a screw and why it's important we should have the biggest length versus the shortest length and depending on what we do for it, right? Like I- I mean, we just did the same thing for mechanical keyboards. <laughs> we literally, yeah, we literally just did that for mechanical keyboards like 10 minutes ago, right? So rewind if you guys want to hear that topic again. And I looked up, by the way, my mechanical keyboard is a G613 from Logitech, nice. right? I, I like what that switch? One, what switch, damn it. So I don't know what all the specs are on that thing. God damn it. A, but it was a lot of fun to play games with, uh, with when I was playing with Nine, right? So, like, I, I thoroughly enjoy that keyboard. But, um, like, yeah. We have a lot of random knowledge. We have just yeah, we just have a bunch of random knowledge. About it's stuff, right? it's it's Absolutely. weird also because I I, I realize this a lot, especially during uh, I guess work and during I guess, I guess when I don't interact with you guys, right? Mm-hmm. I realize this a lot when I when I meet new people or meet people through work. How much they they that tend, random knowledge helps, right? Yeah, not even it helps. That I don't realize I have it because they usually acknowledge it. You know, oh, really? like, yeah, because I would be talking about one thing. We have a, like a normal, we start off as a normal conversation. You know, we get, you know, send their questions. Well, you know, where you been? How, how are you? What's your, you know, education? Stuff like that, you know, just the yeah, yeah, yeah. starters, right? Then we get into a conversation. And then, you know, usually they kind of take control of the conversation. And then by the end of it, I'm like basically explaining. Uh, it starts with them kind of explaining something to me, but it ends with me basically explaining them and like demonstrating them and then they'll be like just sitting there listening and be like where'd you get all this knowledge <laughs> and, I'm, and i'm like I, I just had it in my, in my we head. just, we just to- talk about so many random things <laughs> nine just flashes back to a 3 a.m discord conversation we had and he goes oh shit wow okay oh, here, like- let me let, this this is exactly where it comes from actually i've just pinpointed it now two tries uh-huh. to tell us something and then me and nine have to prove him wrong so we have to google everything in the world yeah See, that's the best advantage. You have to have that friend who always thinks he's right. And, you, and your goal in life should always be to prove him wrong. See, that's their personal project, right? Absolutely. My point is just to bring so- something up that I'm right. And their point is to prove me wrong. And so that's how <laughs> we get all this deeper and deeper knowledge, right? We make ourselves like for, stronger. Like, for example, I'll tell them the sky is purple, right? Obviously, that's an exaggeration here. But, like, I'll tell them the sky is purple. They'll be like, no, it's not. And I'll be like, well, prove it to me. And then they start Ozone. digging up Reddit articles. Then they start digging up Reddit and Google <laughs> articles for the next two hours, and then all of a sudden I get proven wrong. But we've learned a shit ton in that process. Absolutely. Just just like just like how you know we learned that you actually can wipe a, a solid state drive with a magnet, right, guys? I yeah. Know, okay. I that, 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 that is completely my bad. Just beat it with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is completely my bad, right? To be fair, I woke up from a nap, but like, <laughs> it's a, but that is a good point. You cannot erase. So are you guys trying? And you can. Right, if you keep it under a magnet for like 18 hours, but like it's very unlikely that will happen with an SSD. 
Mm-hmm. And most likely with the higher end SSDs, like if you get like a Samsung like T7 and stuff like that, that shit's not gonna happen, right? So it's like you're pretty safe on the SSD market. But hard drives, yeah, don't do it. Also, nine, you will you'll be inclined to know um, the Logitech G13 that two was just telling us about. It has yeah, yeah. these things they're called Romer G switches, you know, because I think Cherry yep. MX lost their patent now, so they're open to like anyone can make key switches now, um, and they are the equivalent of Cherry MX Browns. Hmm. Ooh, really? Oh. So like they're not as clicky as blues, but they're 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 still kind of semi clicky. A tactile quiet G-switch switch that requires forty five G evacuation forge, aka similar to Cherry MX Browns. Ooh. Nice. I like I like browns or blues. Sometimes blues even more. I, I honestly I like clickiness. I, I know a lot of people are like hate clickiness because they're like, you're annoying everyone. And I'm like, but I want people to know that I'm working. <laughs> Actually, to be honest with you, I don't hear any of the clickiness on any of my keyboards when I type. Maybe I just zone out of it, right? But, like, I don't hear it. Oh, I, well, I, I, hear, it. I hear everyone can hear my keyboard. Like, I'm sure you guys will hear it oh, right now if I type. I, like, I hear Yeah, I, I hear, I hear it. four types, right? But, like, when I type myself, they probably hear it, but I don't hear it. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of thing, like, with, like, your own voice. Like, you really don't know what your own voice really sounds like, right? So it's like maybe you also don't know like what your keyboard clicks sound like, right? Because you should never pay attention to no, it. No, I absolutely so, know what my keyboard sounds like. I, 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 I hear it all the time. I, 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 think, I think in my experience, it's kind of like you tend not to acknowledge your keyboard click until one person in your life has acknowledged it. And then, then you can't stop thinking about that. It oh, clicks. 100%. It's like I think out loud. Like you guys see me think out loud and everything, right? And then I had a coworker actually point out that, hey, bro, it's like why are you talking to yourself? And it, it didn't even hit me until he pointed it out, right? And I would have just said, "Why don't you talk to yourself?" <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> "Are you that? Oh God! <laughs> like, like... Do, you, do you not enjoy yourself as company? That's kind of sad, <laughs> <laughs> right?" So I was just like, "Oh God! Oh God! Oh God!" Right? So I was like, and even now, like now that I'm working from home, I'm, I've kind of sensed that I've been talking to myself a lot, right? Maybe I'm just going crazy. I maybe am crazy, right? But like, two was talking. Out- Two is not even talking to us. We're not. We're a fragment of his imagination, and this whole conversation was just with himself the whole time. This whole that would podcast be the, sca- has been that would be the scariest thing I would ever figure out in my life. Honestly, <laughs> that would be the most terrifying thing you guys could do to mess with me. Is like that, that would be the whole... just poof one day. It is spooky month, so. Maybe, I oh, maybe... I watched that video last night. The spooky dance. Uh, it was good. For those of you who don't know, we'll link it in the description, maybe. But like, it's spooky dance month. Um, you know, a lot of people it. actually have spooky month related personal projects, right? Like think about it like Oh think about mm-hmm. like your think about like the, the Halloween decorations that people do. I mean, I think that's kind of a personal project. Like that's something you enjoy. Oh, you do it all oh, the time. Definitely. I've been talking to this with my friend recently, like the Halloween decorations. So for some people, Halloween decorations is definitely a personal project. The Absolutely. amount of time and money they gotta put and money. And money, money and planning. Bro. There, no, it's a personal project. It's a side job for some people. I, don't I, have, a, oh, I have a friend right now who's so big on this. Who, she loves Halloween, right? She's also born in October, so right, like mm-hmm. she'll she's bias. like so a little biased, maybe, bias, right? Bias, but bias. like she, like spooky month, like October is like her month that she does like all this crazy stuff, right? So she has like she like yesterday she sent me a Snapchat, right? She has like spooky nail art that she does, right? And like she's been getting really good at it, like like the things you see on like spooky good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah spooky, you say, right? Like, it's like I don't know what I don't know what the reference was from because I'm a dumbass when it comes to pop culture references, right? But like, she had like this nice nail art that said like crime scene on it in like very really like tiny letters and stuff on her nails, and like she did them herself, and I was like, God damn, that's pretty was, damn wait, sick. Was it was it like yellow tape? Yes, uh, yes. That's not a reference. That's just. That's just spooky. This is like no, cr- no, no. This is... I think it was a reference from some from some TV show or movie though. Are you sure? Well, I think it's just her referencing her like scene police sure crime. Ten letters long. Or maybe I... your nails. Or or again, maybe I'm just dumb... no. She doesn't have like super long nails. Like those freak me out, right? But like, uh, she had that stuff like that. She had one the other day where I think this was her, if I'm not wrong. But she had like um, I think it was like like a blood stain, like scream kind of thing painted across her nails, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's like, she had a Spider Man reference on one of them too. So it's like she's getting really good at all of this stuff, right? And then like, I'm sure she's already planning like her Halloween costumes and stuff like that, right? Like she goes really big on Halloween and stuff. Whereas I go as the same spicy mustard bottle ketchup costume every year Are for the last four years me? now. <laughs> That's funny, man. Wait, wait, right? not to not to blow, not to turn the topic off course, but have you guys thought about Halloween in the last couple of days? I've been thinking about it. I have. 
I actually have, and I have an idea what I want to be, but I, I'm not invited to any parties yet, so I'm figuring it out. <laughs> I'm honestly curious how Halloween's going to work this year with the whole, you know, restrictions and stuff like that. I've heard that a lot of governors are trying to ban trick-or-treating and stuff, and, like, to be honest, like, you know, just thinking about it, like, that's probably the safest event that can happen, like, out of every holiday that occurs right now. Like, you can social distance trick-or-treat, like, you know, people just have, like, I don't know, like a candy bowl, and they put their candy out, and then you go up and grab it. Right? Not or, even that. I was thinking like, masks, I, like I was thinking like you get a big old PVC tube in, right? Yeah. From, from, your, <laughs> I saw from this. your front yep. door, all the way down to your like the front gate of your house, right? Cross that one kid you don't like, you throw him like a rotten egg down that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, just, and you can hear it go down. You ring the little door. Just give me another personal project. I'm, I'm I'm pitching a personal project with someone out there who's listening. I saw you someone a use a leaf blower to power it. And it was like a it was like a candy gun where it was like, it would like pop the candy out the other end. Oh, just oh man, that rotten kids. egg would hit that kid in the face. That would be even better. Like it was pretty. It was pretty cool, honestly. That's there's. Some, I've seen some really cool ideas surrounding this type of stuff, and but I think the main thing, right, is like Halloween this year. We have to admit it's going to be a little different. And then look. For those who don't know, like we're from the states, right? So, and we're also New Yorkers. And New- for us, it's a really big thing to go see the tree every year in Rockefeller Center, yeah. right? I have no idea how that's even going to play out this year. Like, I may actually oh, skip out on the tree sighting this year, right? Just because of I know what the crowds are going to look like. I know what the crowds always have been, yep. right? So it's going to be it's going to be different. Maybe I see it from a distance, like in a car, right? Yeah. But like, it's I already, be I already know, I already know, I already fixed that problem for me. It's another person project on my list. I'm going to recreate the tree. You're going to recreate the tree. It's a personal project. I already, I already I don't, thought I don't how to do it. I understand how they can do any of the Christmas stuff because, like, they've already essentially all but canceled New Year's Eve, right? So the whole ball drop stuff, which is you know, they canceled it. Yeah, dude, it's, it's not happening. Like, the ball is going to drop, but like the only people that are allowed to be there <laughs> is is the um, ball's already dropped. Is like media <laughs> and like a select few people that are there just to like make it not look like a ghost wow. town. Wow, I've never actually like. That's going to be weird seeing Times Square just be empty. Yeah, well, I mean, for uh, our entire lives and literally since, like, forever, like, Times Square has been packed, right? Like, I'm just thinking about what are these New like Year's the Eve points. shows going to look like? Like, New Year's, <laughs> like, New Year's Eve has been packed. New Year's Eve has been packed in Times Square since, like, the beginning of time, right? Absolutely. Like, even when the ball drops in, in, in New Year's Eve, like, you can go back to the 40s when the ball was, like, a mechanical thing that people were, like, tugging down and everything, right? Like, you saw massive amounts of crowds. Like, I, this is, this is I already know how to fix this. This is easy too. I can fix this. Thing. You're gonna recreate the ball drop in your backyard? That's a, that's. A, let me add that to the list. I wasn't thinking that. Um, <laughs> no, an actual an actual solution. An actual solution to this, right? Would be don't focus too much on this year's crowd, but this would be a good opportunity to re or revisit the the crowds of the last twenty years, oh. and, and kind of do like a time lapse of like all the crowds throughout the years. You know, that's starting, a like, really oh, good idea, Nine. You need to call like all the major news you need channels. To call- Get on this right now. Get on. I got an idea for you. We can recreate the tree in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you go call the new, you should call the New Year's Eve. I think it's a foundation that actually does this in New York City, right? I think yeah. it's called the New York City New Year's Eve Foundation or something like that, right? Call them up and pitch them that idea real quick and see what they go. No, with. and that is That's brilliant, dude. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. You're right. My my tree idea is pretty smart. I think the other one's okay, but the tree one's pretty good. New personal project. <laughs> Do New Year's Eve. That's it. See, that was not and this is how, and like so for those you. And for those of you who are still listening to our random moments and rants like this, right? It's like this is how side projects are really born, right? Where it's just it's usually awesome. me coming up with it and then not fulfilling it. <laughs> or it's some stupid or it's some stupid idea that was like far stretching imagination. Like one of my side projects I have right now that I'm thinking about working on, right? And I've had it for a while. And it's all because, you know, um Ford just pointed out to me at a hackathon. He goes, You should build hot dog, not a hot dog. And I wrote it down from that day. Until now. If you guys and know where that's be- from, that's from Silicon Valley, right? The show on HBO where, like, they build... So, too, have you done they, it? They build an app. I still and, haven't like, done it. Yet. All it does is you can look at you can look at food and take a picture of it. And if it's a hot dog, it tells you it's a hot dog via, like, some machine learning algorithm. And if it's not a hot dog, it just goes not hot dog. And that wasn't that's supposed it. to be the app. It was supposed to be able to identify any food. But, you know, obviously, you need the reason they didn't do it was because, quote-unquote... I'm not farming all that data. Like, you need, like, thousands of image images of each type of food. Which reminds me, for I may need to borrow your NAS for this. Just yeah, saying. yeah. Like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. You can go use S3 like everybody else. He gets also, a NAS bag filled with pictures of food. 
Oh, so the, the recount, uh, what Four said is correct. I'm reading right now. They did cancel the Times Square in person celebration. Wow. This was back uh, September 23. Mm-hmm. Oh, so actually recently. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. wow. It's middle of October. Never mind. Uh, like, <laughs> yes. Time is so, flying, guys. Like, absolutely. Time is flying. But apparently it's canceled. And also, um, the Thanksgiving parade will also be only televised only. So no yeah, so that one I knew about just because I have a friend who, who works at Thanksgiving parade, mm-hmm. right? Uh-huh. So um, that I already knew about. Like he said, like the floats and everything is just going to be him and the people who are running it, right? So for him this year, he's it's actually easier for him just because like he doesn't have to fight the crowd that's going to be on the street as he's directing people through traffic and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's also bad in a way because like you're not going to hear anyone. Right, it's gonna be just like the it's gonna be like cars just driving down with big ass. Like they could always just play background noise, right? That's what they've been doing for all the NFL games. I right? know, I know it's kind of weird, right? Football. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have been watching football, but like I've been watching a ton of football lately, and it's like, it's it's weird, right? Because I see all the stands are empty, right? Except for Denver, where they have South Park sitting there, right? I think like, that's the best solution you could come up with. But like, it's like. It it just feels weird to me. Like I re- I would rather not have them play background noise. And actually hear the hits and hear the like play calls and everything, right? But I understand why they're doing the background noise. Also, is because now that you can actually hear uh, people calling plays and everything, the teams actually have to switch up plays every week now, right? Yeah. Most teams already did this. The good teams already did this. But if you're a fan of the Jets, like me, right? We did it. Um. So. Sure like, did. <laughs> so like for us, like we're already really bad, and so we just got worse this season. I don't know how, but like. It's just weird watching all that background noise really just fill in, at least for me personally. But, I, I but anyway, it, I think we got really off track here, so let's end off yeah. with a couple a couple questions real quick, right? Sure. Three main questions I have, right? Okay. First question. If you are doing a technical project, do you open source? Do you not open source? Why or why not? <gasps> depends. I think it depends on the, the, the purpose of their project. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say if it's, like I said... On my type of project, where it's only selfish, um, <laughs> and there's really you know, it's not used for anyone else outside of yourself, then no. Why would you? I already see your I already see your copyright license for your open source. Do with this what you will, but don't contact me if there's problems. <laughs> if, <laughs> if it goes on fire sporadically, that's not my problem. Okay, that's your problem. <laughs> but I think if it's uh, if it's some sort of side product that you think can really benefit a lot of people, even even if it's something not even like life changing, just something that you think benefits someone out there, anyone that has a market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, open source it. I mean, like, a worst case scenario, um, no one uses it. And, you know, you're still out there. You still get credit for creating something. Best case scenario, you get a couple of like-minded individuals who want to expand it, improve it, and, uh, you know, benefit a lot of people in the process. I would say nine out of ten times, I'm not open sourcing it. Simply because it's so much work to upkeep with an open source project. That's fair. That's you, sim- do have that's to, you do have to it. maintain like, it. it it's, like, it's like a, like a basically like another... I guess uh group you have to maintain. Like, it's like, uh, hey, team. we found these issues. Can you please fix them? Let's let's do this. Let's do that. Or like, you know, oh, I've opened a pull request. Like, can you now review all of my code before you merge it to make sure I didn't do anything like malicious or bad? It's also, like, with a lot of things on the internet, you got to make sure it's not no one's like you know trolling you. Yeah, so you got to make exactly. sure that actually, it's, just, it's, it's a lot of work. work. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Um, me personally. I'm a big proponent of the open source community. I would contribute to another open source project. Would I open source one of my own projects? Like nine, like you said, unless I feel like it's going to really impact like thousands of people. And I'm saying thousands, right? Like mm-hmm. my base minimum was like, will it affect at least a thousand people? Is I guess the question I will ask, which is a small amount of people, right? Yeah. Then I'll open source it. If it's not going to affect a thousand people, then I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I'm not going to do it. Sure. So that's right. kind of that's kind of my mentality on the open source kind of thing but i will definitely be more than yeah, happy to contribute to open source projects right absolutely I agree. and like and go with that like all right next question expanded skill set what skills have you guys have actually learned from your random projects that you guys have done random personal projects all right well i'll, I'll, I'll pick up first so i think for me i learned a lot about uh, computer networking through my nas and home server I learned a lot about IoT and, I guess, electronic components and circuitry and engineering and motors through all of my different, you know, like RFID, like locking systems and that kind of makes you a ventilator project I talked about and, you know, more about circuitry, soldering and different components and sensors and stuff through, you know, thinking about 
how I can make my sprinklers get connected to the internet and how I'm working on this kind of um, internet connected water, uh, like leak detector, water detector. So, I mean, for me, most of my skills that I've picked up now come in the form of, you know, that, you know, basically the, the whole IoT circuitry, microcontroller, microcomputing, you know, networking a little bit. And then, you know, based on the new security certifications, just, you know, some more, I guess, like background to my cybersecurity skill set. That's fair. Nine, what about you? Um, a lot of times when I do personal projects, I do it in the pursuit of learning a skill. So nine out of 10 times, if the way I just for myself mm-hmm. take on a project, it's because I know it's going to actually improve uh, a skill set, mm-hmm. right? And actually pursue me and pushes me. For a lot of times, I, I feel like I wouldn't know a skill unless I take a project about it. So that's pretty much how I learn my teach myself web design, taught myself mobile mm-hmm. uh, design, uh, taught myself like uh, scripting, Python, uh, small network servers with like Raspberry Pis, mm-hmm. um, basically how to maintain a server and upkeep it. I did all these. I learned all these skills basically purely based on the projects that I did it. So I would say in terms of expanding my skill sets, it was mostly all due because I did a project. Interesting. And two, what about you? you yeah, in my know. case, really for the expanded skill sets, it's really just, I say some soft skills have really improved, right? Like I know some side projects we work on, I kind of take on like the organization role, right? So I kind of like take on like the Jira board management or the Confluence page management and stuff like that, right? And I enjoy that stuff, right? So I love expanding on those skill sets. In terms of technical skills, you know, just like nine, right? Most of my tech, most of my side projects, I like kind of want to learn something and I kind of want to go through that process of learning it on my own, even though like I could just Google it. I want to like learn it on my own and get better at it. And so that's where I've really picked up like the Flutter mm-hmm. framework, for example, um, and more recently like JavaScript. Um, believe it or not, like I've never really done JavaScript until like maybe about a month ago. Except for that one hackathon, and, am I right? Ba-boom. Yeah, except for that. Yeah, besides <laughs> that one hackathon, and which for the hackathon it clicked with me easily because I came from Java to Node, which is really like pretty standard. But like now doing like front end like React development and everything, it was drastically different and a different like set of experiences, even with my Flutter knowledge, right? So that was for me. But final question I have, and then. I think we're out of time on the podcast, but the final question I have is what have you guys actually learned about yourselves while working on these side projects? It's more of a philo- philosophical, deeper question. I-, I can start this one. Sure. I think I learned really quickly from these projects that I work really well if there's some sort of organized workflow, right? Or mm-hmm. some pressure, you know? Mm-hmm. So if I like trying to learn a skill, Right. Let's say I'm trying to learn a new language or learning a new, uh, I guess, library. Right. If mm-hmm. I try to go the you know the route that most people take, do a tutorial, you know, stuff like that, do a course. Yeah. I don't really. I don't feel like I really learn. I feel like I I will learn the basics of it and maybe learn one or two things, memorize it. But I feel like I wouldn't actually learn it. And most of the times, I kind of like drop the course or don't go all the way. Right. Do the yeah. other things. But if it's turned into a project something that f- heavily focuses on the language or the library that I'm trying to learn, I tend to not only learn it, but I also tend to learn it way better and be able to utilize it in different projects and utilize and really know how to understand it and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So from these projects, I think a lot of things I learned about myself is that I, I need some sort of pressure, right? Like get this project done within this time frame, and I need some sort of organized flow like some realistic environment, not just me learning a course through like tutorial. It needs to be some sort of practical thing. All right, Nine, how about this then, ready? If you don't finish your personal project by the end of next week, I'm going to come over and punch you in the face. Got it. I'm emailing the Times Square Alliance for my <laughs> my proposal. On... No. <laughs> and uh, I'll hopefully get it done before I get punched in the face. <laughs> you just see an email go out tomorrow. All right, New Year's Eve has been pushed to October 17th. Um, oh, no. We, oh, no. we will be doing this immediately. <laughs> like, Oh, no, my punch to the face is coming soon. <laughs> it's inevitable. All right, then I guess for me, um, I hate these philosophical questions, by the way, but... Um, <laughs> That's why I asked them. Are you a monkey or you're a pawn? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, but, Are you a but... curious or a... I can't think of anything else. <laughs> I think that I've learned that I just like to kind of work on a broad spectrum of stuff. Like, you know, 
I just I, I have such a, a wide variety of interests, like even just within like CS, because I would consider pretty much everything I, all of my major hobbies kind of revolve around CS, but they're different enough that they don't feel the same. Right, like if I'm working on my NAS and I'm doing networking stuff or I'm trying to set up user accounts and kind of do some type of network administration, like that feels different mm-hmm. than if I'm sitting here and I'm soldering this water meter together, uh, this water detector together to try and get this freaking 9 volt battery to power my 3.3 volt Arduino so that way I don't fry it, right? Like, yeah, there's, there, I don't know, it, they're just, they're, they're, they're closely related in terms of their actual <laughs> field. They'd both be considered, I think, computer engineering to some degree. But mm-hmm. they're not the same at all. So, like, I don't know. I think that I've just discovered that I have a very wide liking in terms of what I do. You know, I like to program. I like to work with the hardware. I like to work with you the like network stuff. I like, like, I like, to, like, like to do cybersecurity and hacking and whatnot. And he like likes to, to prove too engineer. wrong on a lot of technical topics. What happened? I like he likes to prove too wrong on a lot of technical topics. I do. That is true. It's big. Probably my biggest we all like actually. That, though. that should be its own branch of software engineering. Proving too wrong. It, yes. It's 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 improved. It's expanding. I promise you. <laughs> All right, and then yeah. did you go yet? I, nah. So then I guess for me, really, um, what was it, like what I really learned about myself is you know, it's a tough question, right? It's like I learned that I'm more lazier than I thought I was, right? I'll be honest with you guys there, right? Because like, don't really feel like doing a couple things, but then. I get like this sudden burst of motivation and then I just got to go and do it. Whether it's three o'clock in the morning or whether it's like two in the afternoon, right? I'll just sit down and just hardwire myself to it and just get it done, right? I think for me on the whole, what I've really learned about myself is just that I've been, I enjoy like for you said, right? I have a very, like in varied variety of interests, right? Not only in technical, but also outside technical. Absolutely, yep. And it's kind of just like, for me, one thing I have to work on for myself right now is just balancing the time to dedicate to each one of those, right? Because, you know, we all feel like there's more time than there actually is, and unfortunately, there's not. And I guess I got to be really more selfish about my time now, right? Like, instead of helping more people, right? Which I also thoroughly enjoy doing, right? I love helping people and everything also. But, like, I think I got to take more selfish time out for myself to really just expand on all my interests, right? Yeah. And maybe that's something I'll focus more on maybe next year or the year after, right? Because it's just been really all over the place with that. But, yeah. Right. And so, guys, I guess I think we're at time, yep, right? we are or, at Correct time. me if I'm wrong. Um, but, guys, this has been personal projects. And basically, I guess, how you can get started with them, what your interests are with them. And I guess a brief intro into mechanical keyboards. <laughs> and we've been the 429 podcast we enjoy you guys listening to us this is a guy this guys this has actually been episode 16 of our regular sunday episode so you guys are still listening out there thank you guys so much we appreciate you guys closing up month right. number four here if you can believe it i know four yeah. months we've actually hit this is it's an interesting insane milestone right um we have something exciting planned for the one year right so stick with us and i <laughs> promise you it'll all pay off when we hit the one year mark right but um maybe would that would oh, that yeah. be <laughs> With that being said, guys, we've been the 429 Podcast. Check us out on social media, but I'm two. I'm nine. I'm four, and we will see you on TechCast Friday. Keep your ears open. I think it's going to be a good one. It's going to definitely be a good one. <laughs> no worries. All right, Bye, guys. guys. Bye.